This is Rupert. Come here. Come here. He said, oh, you're going to sit by me? Come here and say hello. How are you doing? Empty and forgotten In the waves of darkness Colors seem to take in birds and um, we help about 2,000 injured and orphaned birds a year. We have some um, that come in and never leave. <laughs> so we have sort of a sanctuary to some extent for birds here that, um, you know, we don't, we never put anything down. So it's, uh, you know, they stay as long as they need to, whether it's finding a home or um, healing up and some of them are in, Hello, yes, that's very loud. <laughs> Some of them are here for, you know, years getting medical care or waiting for homes. I was putting boxes in the shed from outside and the rain started pouring really hard and all of a sudden the roof just came off the building that I was in. So I thought to myself for a quick second, I, I don't care about anything that's out there getting wet. I then was concerned about the animals out here and what was happening with the wind that we had. And I came out of the building down here and went to walk through here and I couldn't even see my hand in front of my face. The storm was, you know, it was pouring so hard but when I got down here, all the cages we'd built and everything we had done was destroyed. All the pins were lifted up. Some of them were over the fence. We found some of them in the field. They, um, you know, it was just like a tornado came through and destroyed everything. Hi, Mr. Fuzzy. You want to come sit on my lap now? Oh. Oh, are you guys going to get jealous fights now? Hmm? Are you jealous? It's okay. I'll pet you too. But anyway, I was here working and Sandy called me in and she said, oh, come in and sit down. And I'm like, just tell me what it is, you know. She said, well, you got the grant, the pet finder grant. She hadn't told me how much it was yet. She goes, well, you know, it's $60,000. And I, I, I was like, oh my God, wow. Because <laughs> that's an incredible amount of money for us. We don't even get that much money in a year for donations. You know, originally I thought we, they would just give you the money and we'd pay to have a barn built. And then when um, we found out they would come down and do the work and all that, we, we were really excited. I don't get too overly excited about many things. <laughs> but um, that was pretty, it was a pretty big deal for us. Foundation's Rescue You program is at it again. We are in Indian Trail, North Carolina at the Carolina Waterfowl Rescue. And thanks to the generous donation of the Animal Rescue site, we've been able to come down here and help them fix it up. You can't really tell from the video, but the hand warmer should be an indication. Even though it's North Carolina, it is January and it is bitter cold. We're fighting the cold, we're fighting the mud, but we're gonna muscle on through and get it done. sheathing the barn with our exterior material. So right now all we're waiting on is for the frost to get off that roof so we can get up there and put some shingles on this new building that we have. What we're going to do for them is divide this up into two little sections. They'll have the main area where the birds can hang out and get out of the uh, bad weather. And back over there we're going to put a wall up and give them some storage space. Storage is always, like I said, a huge issue at shelters. So we're going to try to help them out a little bit by giving them more room. So this
this is our, we actually call it the gimpy duck yard. <laughs> and this is basically where more of the crippled birds go. Most of them are missing feet or they're, um, some are missing their legs, but there's a couple that just don't get around really well. So we do put new birds out here when they come out of the hospital, if they're limping. And then once they get better, we transition them out into the other yard. He was just being used for target practice by kids in the neighborhood. So he ran in the street trying to get away from them. And he had a lot of um, damage to his legs from uh, pellets that were under his skin. And some of them were under his tendons. And so he walks kind of funny. <laughs> but um, he's doing pretty good. He's had a few surgeries to remove pellets as over time some of them will surface out of areas we couldn't reach and then they'll wedge under a leg muscle or something and it will we're pretty sure he's done having the pellets removed but you can tell he walks kind of funny the way he's upright that was all from his you know leg damage he has uh, some problems with his gland that produces his oil because the, there was a pellet down there too. So Miss Caitlin here is digging us some holes so that we can actually fence in this area. What this is going to be is an outdoor play area for the ducks that are going to live in the barn. Poor Caitlin, I say, because the ground is frozen and so not only has she got the joy of digging holes, but she says the joy of digging holes in frozen turf. Um, three turkeys uh, had fallen off the turkey truck and they had never been outside or had the sunshine or the fresh air and, until we got them. And they're pretty beat up still, but they'll molt and look a lot better. Their immune system's pretty bad just from the bad conditions they live in. So they, um, you know, they have a hard time healing up. So she still kind of struggles a little bit, but they're coming along really good. Lily's wing had been broken before she fell off the truck because it had uh, had an advanced infection in it that wouldn't have happened that quickly. So we had to do surgery on her to repair her wing. When this thaws out, it becomes muck that is up over the tops of your boots. Absolutely disgusting. So we're going to need to get the bobcat back here, put in a swale and a berm, and see if we can't run some of this water away from where these people need to be working. We had gotten a call from another wildlife center. They had this crow. He was missing his beak. and. They were trying to place him because we wouldn't release him that way. Plus he's got a little bit of a bad wing. We were just talking to the vet how he couldn't play with the toys and he couldn't do the foraging because of the fact there was no beak there. He said, well, let's try a beak on him. He said, I would do that just for the fun of it. And so we brought him down and tried it. And then he got out of surgery and immediately started picking up food. You can kind of see the wire frame here a little bit. See that here where the silver marks are? Right. That's actually, it almost looks like a robotic beak underneath. The goats, they try to break out as often as they can. We're gonna enclose them in with privacy fence around the whole perimeter of this awesome sized pasture. He said my head hurts, he wants some aspirin. What happened to him? He was on the side of the road, so we'll just assume he got hit. Oh. Someone just brought him right now. We're gonna go get him fixed up. He's definitely got something going on with his eye here. We'll take him to the wrapper place, but it's like an hour from here, so we'll stabilize him tonight. of this yard. This is one of our biggest shelters that we've ever worked at in terms of property. They actually have 11 acres here to work with and what you see in the background, all that wooded area is also their property. What they want to do is set up a perimeter fence to not only protect from predators a little bit better, but also to have a nice area that's secluded in the back for some of the birds that are really a little bit more secluded shy and in need of privacy. Things like the herons and some of the other waterfowl that really just can't live in this communal, very busy setting. 
So we'll take you back into the woods and show you what our fence crew is up to. We're actually running 1,500 feet of chain link. And you see the guys behind me that are starting to get that done. We've already got the poles in, we've got the wire strung, and now we're starting to get the actual chain link up on these fences. We're cutting and measuring it right now. We're gonna put it up on the uh, poles in a couple minutes here and make it look so beautiful. He doesn't think he's a turkey, he thinks he's a person. And that's one of the unique things about birds is that um, you really can't do it with dogs and cats, but birds imprint. So when they're born, um, the first thing they see in general is what they associate with what they are. So when Mr. T was born, when somebody hatched him, he saw people and they raised him up and kept him as a pet. And then he was abandoned when he was bigger because people do that a lot and then the people just don't realize when they raise them in a house that when they get to a state where normally a bird would be in the wild by itself, um, they think it's okay just to let him go. And so he was turned loose and just started following people around and that's how we picked him up. But he's not even a wild turkey, he's a domestic breed of turkey. So um, even if he was wild, he, you know, he would never have survived uh, with the fact that he doesn't know he's a turkey. <laughs> One of the big problems that the shelter has been having is they have been wasting thousands and thousands of dollars on soggy wet feed that the, ge that the geese and the ducks and everybody can't eat. So what these are here is we've set up four different feeding stations, I'll call them, and basically it's just a pole barn, but all it's gonna do is give them a little protection from the rain for themselves, and more importantly, help them save some of the money on less loss on wasted wet food. Mr. Fuzzy, who's tugging on my shirt back here, um, he thinks he's a person too, so he doesn't really hang out with the geese. He follows me around and he tries to get in the house, and then he was confiscated because he's considered wildlife and you can't own migratory birds. So he was taken to a wildlife center there where they had plans to euthanize him for being too nice because they kept trying to release him and he would follow people around and he picked me because um, I think he wanted me to be his mom. So, you know, he, hi handsome, hi. I know, you're such a good turkey. You're such a good turkey. I love turkeys. This is not recreational day at Rescue U. Um, this is a mode of transportation to the island that you see behind me. Uh, what they have here is one of their many ponds that they have on their property. And the island in the center is actually set up to be like a predator protection island so that should a raccoon or a fox get in here, the ducks and the geese can get out to the island and get a little bit more safe distance between them and whatever predator it is. This is how we have to get all of our materials out to that island to build yet another feeding station for the ducks. these college kids who are giving up their winter vacation, mm -hmm. New Year's, to come out here and volunteer. I mean, just what does that mean to you? I, it's it's really cool. I I mean, I have two teenagers and I can't, uh, couldn't get them to put out this kind of effort. So when she said college kids at first, I thought, oh boy, because I got to chase mine down and um, put them to work. But we've just been blown away by these kids. They're, they're so dedicated and so hardworking. And I think, um, it definitely gives us some uh, hope for our youth here <laughs> that, um, you know, there's definitely some, um, they have an incredible work ethic. We just, it's really been um, heartwarming to see them all put in the effort and um, to give up their whole vacations and and they work every day, all day, sun up to sun down. So we we just have been blown away by, by their um, efforts here.
So we're doing well, but we could always be further ahead. We've got four more days left and tons to do. Ponds to dig deeper, driveways to fix, barn to get painted, electric to get done, and that's only the half of it. I don't know what we've caught on video so far today, but I'm sure you've seen me running around with a chick like a chicken with its head cut off. No bird humor intended. So there are so many different projects that we're working on and we couldn't do this without our amazing volunteers. We've got people in from Oklahoma, we've got kids in from Kentucky, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Delaware, all over the Northeast. We've got people here that have been amazing help to us. So much local support on this, whether they're cooking for us or helping us paint the barn, we couldn't do it without them. Today we have our gourmet meatloaf um, with brown sugar and ketchup. <laughs> what do you think about having all these college kids out here slaving I think away? They're the most wonderful thing that's happened to us in a long time. Yeah. And we're uh, so pleased that they could make it down and hope they enjoyed being down here. So we're looking for volunteers in the kitchen to help prepare for the lunch and the cleanup, you know. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I can do this. You know, I've done this many, many years. So, yeah, it's been delightful. But I think we've done well. I think they've had some really, really, really nice meals. This is, I think, a great experience because it will give them an appreciation for the wildlife and hopefully they will carry on through their older years of volunteering and appreciating and taking care of, you know, the animals. I've done the fencing. Well, I dug some of the holes. I fixed some of the the fence line in the back woods. Carried the concrete actually out into the woods for some of the girls. It's your first trip. What's, what's the experience been like? Hard, kind of sore. We did a lot, a lot of privacy fencing, so we cemented holes, carried 50 pounds of cement like over half a mile in really rocky terrain. That was awesome. I helped Doug carry some of the sod, although he did the, most of the laying stuff. It's cool because the birds need help and they need like they need someone to take care of them when they're sick like this, so it's cool to have a place for it. Yeah, this was something I never knew was even a, a need, honestly. And to see how many animals here would probably either be in a lot of pain or dead were it not for Carolina Waterfowl Rescue, it's just incredible. Oh, and oh, I dug trenches over there and helped dig out the duck pond over there. That was fun. Another one of my nicknames, affectionately, I hope, I'm, I just, is Pigpen. So you can tell when I get to play in mud, I'm actually a really happy camper. I dug for three days straight, and uh, every moment Bryn Kutch made fun of me. Um, it's a lot of backbreaking work, but I mean, all the differences that's being made just because of you know the clay, um, it, it's really gonna be a great thing after uh, we leave. We were trying to uh, get Dan to work faster out on that island back there, and we had a bet going that he couldn't dig one hole in the time that it took me to dig two holes. And I dug a 16 inch hole down 
in the time that it took him to fix a hole that he had already dug the day before. You can dig post holes faster. Post holes? Probably her? Probably? Probably. Probably? Probably. I love it. I love the people. I love just you know what it's like to be done with the trip and to leave and look and say we just built that building and um, it's just a great experience. It's a great thing to do. Um, not only helping out the community but helping out the animals it's it's a really great thing to do. Here we are on our second to last day. You know how these trips go. Everything's getting a little tight with time. We got tons of work that left needs to be done still. So we have put in every effort to get every volunteer we can. We've even got Tim Coonan, the CEO of Animal Rescue Site here, rolling up his sleeves, getting dirty to help us out. As always, we appreciate the funding and the sponsorship from ARS, but boy, today I even appreciate the volunteerism even more. feeding boxes and I moved them to an island. We were uh, digging drainage ditches and then uh, lining them with uh, grass uh, to filter the sediment out of them and then uh, uh, rerouting them in through this uh, pond for the couple of settlement ponds that were dug by the volunteers. special to see the work being done here. I think we have, obviously, the work that they're doing here is amazing. We are honored to be able to help our customers and clickers and donors uh, have, have really made a huge contribution. Um, I also think that the real contribution is going to be seen by what happens with the young people who work here and what they do later on with their lives, because I see enormous impact for them as well as for the animals and for the, the community. So we are honored to be able to help the uh, Rescue You and to help uh, the Wild Fowl Center here and, uh, and to be able to, uh, to make a contribution. I mean, that's, that's why the Animal Rescue Site exists and is to help all animals and to help rescue animals and to see all the birds here and to see the one-legged birds that have been rehabilitated or prosthetic with prosthetic limbs or prosthetic bills, uh, to see animals that would otherwise be euthanized allowed to live out their lives in peace. I, this is a very special place here and uh, I'm very sorry that the tornado hit here but I'm pleased that we've been able to make a little 
uh, difference and that the volunteers for Rescue U have made big differences. So if people are considering a Rescue U trip in the future, considering volunteering, it seems to me that it's really, really worthwhile. You have real impact, you get to meet really special people, and uh, you have impact that lasts for decades after you leave. So we're, we're honored to help you. Where do you want it? That's good right there. It's the final days and everyone here, all the volunteers and, and staff, are working as hard as they can to get everything done. Seriously, when we set up this job and we did this, I, I honest to God, I didn't think we'd get that back 1,500 feet of fence in. Um, this is just bonus because we found a little extra tweaking money room in the budget. Um, thank you, ARS. Basically, what I want to get done up front here is we need to get all the fittings on, we need to get the poles on, the poles cut, the wire pulled. But if you girls can really get cranking on that, we still gotta get a second coat of paint on most of the trim, I believe. We gotta get the sheathing up inside and the FRP up inside. The dump truck's gonna be coming, I have no idea when, but pretty soon with all the gravel. So you guys who are setting up and painting, you have got to keep your junk off of this area. So first things first, you know, take you, Wheezy, and move those rolls of chain link into the duck pen. Dan hasn't done any chain link this whole trip. <laughs> and he would cry. Did you see how upset he was that he hasn't gotten to do chain link? He was like, yes, I get to do chain link, finally. I've been waiting all trip. Okay, so you guys know what you're doing? Get her onions. Let's do this so we can get home and get clean and not have to go out to dinner all dirty. doesn't look too healthy to me. It's because it's dormant right now. Oh, it's dormant? Yes. Oh, okay. It'll spring back to life as soon as it warms up and gets a lot of water. like ankle deep and the first few days it actually rained and it was ridiculous it sucked the bottom of my shoe off if we have time and I think this would be a perfect job for you is moving the uh, chain link rolls with the bobcat. Oh. Bryn's going to teach me how to use the bobcat, um, which I've been trying to nag her for uh, to do, learn how to use for the past week. Um, so I'm hoping that I get to use that.
when I was in Oklahoma, that was my first trip, I hated it. Like it was so bad. And then I went home and I only remembered all the fun I had and it was just awesome. And I was like, I could not wait to get on another one. And now they can't get rid of me. The past two uh, Kentucky and Tennessee trips, um, I couldn't go because of work. Okay. And it actually really, it really upset me because this is one thing that I, this is, this is my thing. Um, my family knows that this is what I do over my winter breaks, what I do over my summer break. So my family knows this is what I do and you know, it's a great thing to do. We have just been blown away by these kids. They're, they're so dedicated and so hardworking and I think um, it definitely gives us some uh, hope for our youth here. <laughs> Every college kid should be required to do this, in my Absolutely. opinion. Absolutely. Yeah. Great, great appreciation for life. Yeah. yeah. I also think that the real contribution is going to be seen by what happens with the young people who work here and what they do later on with their lives, because I see enormous impact for them as well as for the animals and for the, the community. In addition to all the really great projects that we're doing over this two-week process, we'd also like to present you guys with a check for $5,000 to go into care and feeding and anything that you may need as we uh, depart from your awesome shelter. We just wanted to say thanks for letting us come. Mm -hmm. We had a great time and we just really hope you enjoy what we've done here. Yes, we really appreciate it. That's awesome. <laughs> and all your guys' work. We're gonna miss everybody. <laughs> so on behalf of Rescue You and the Animal Rescue Site and the Pet Finder, Foundation, here's Here money to continue your great work. We've been a lot of places with our Rescue You program and uh, didn't really quite know what to expect with the waterfowl rescue and you do an amazing job and you do a great job adopting out and caring for these birds and we're just thrilled to be able to be here with you. We appreciate it, thank you. Excellent. We uh, really uh, needed the help and like I said, we get overlooked a lot because we do non-traditional animals so it's um, really been amazing to have you guys here and helping us. That I wasn't expecting at all and we we do struggle with getting donations and like I've mentioned before getting grants and getting help so we um, really really can use the donation and so it's very much appreciated and we'll um, put it to some good use here and 100% and of our money comes in goes directly to the animals. We don't pay any of our people here or um, really fund anything else it 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 will all go directly to these animals here so it's money well spent a big thanks to rescue you the pet finder foundation and the animal rescue site for being out here and helping us uh, with all the hard work and our grant you're gonna definitely help us save hundreds of birds thousands of birds um, every year with um, our new barn and we couldn't have done it without you rescue you wouldn't be possible without the support from the animal rescue site audience Click every day, shop, donate to our Gifts That Give More program, and volunteer in your community to help animals.